All right, hello everyone. Uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, interesting weather we're having today. Uh, we're going to move onwards, so you should now be familiar with all the chemistry stuff, all of the bonds, the elements, molecules, all that stuff. So um, don't forget you have a homework assignment due tonight. And I'm going to continue now with chapter three. So we progress from chapter two, chapter three now that introduces the concept of macromolecules. So macro with an A being the opposite of micro with an I. Micro means tiny, macro means very, very large. So macromolecules are giant molecules. So we should know now what a molecule is, um, a combination of two or more elements. So a big giant molecule. So uh, may have a molecular weight, molecular mass of over 100,000 atomic mass units. That's pretty big and it's a heavy, heavy molecule. So they don't have to be that large, but many of these big proteins, uh, big macromolecules will get that size. So just like anything large, it, it, it doesn't start large. It, like you, you started out as a tiny baby, right? And, and you grew, you add mass, you add tissue. So these big molecules, kind of a generic term, they're gonna call them as polymers. So a big macromolecule, macromolecule is considered to be a polymer. Polymer is considered to be a macromolecule. So they are formed by the combination of a lot of little units. So these monomers. So monomers connect together to form polymers. A polymer is, is this big aggregation of individual little monomers. So covalent bonds that then link these things together to form the big polymer. So monomers, uh, monomers bond to form a polymer. So uh, what we focus on in biology, right? In chemistry, there's a different focus, different depth, different uh, detail. Uh, for biology, we are just trying to simplify. We're trying to sort of profile. We know there's all these different types of molecules. Well, we're, we're focusing on the ones that have the most biological significance. And by profiling, by sort of uh, organizing, categorizing all of the chemicals out in, in, in chemistry, uh, we narrow it down into four sort of macromolecule or four organic kind of compounds that, that we look at, right? We call these the macromolecules. And I'm pretty sure you've heard of these. I'd be kind of surprised if you haven't heard at least of some of these. I think you have heard of proteins, right? Carbohydrates, which are basically the sugars lipids, which are fats, and the nucleic acids, which are, are genetic molecules. So all of these proteins, carbs, lipids, nucleic acids are considered to be macromolecules. All of these proteins, carbs, lipids, nucleic acids are a type of polymer. Why are they polymers? Because they're made up of individual uh, little monomers. Each, each one, each category is going to have a different array of monomers uh, that, that are connected together. And, and we'll kind of get to that with each chapter that we progress to. So regardless if you are a human, if you're a cat, a dog, a frog, a mushroom, a plant, um, all living things are going to be comprised of these four macromolecule categories and, and roughly about that percentage, right? So the biggest piece of the pie being proteins, uh, the second biggest in abundance, but the uh, most important would be the nucleic acids and then carbohydrates and then followed by lipids. So again, all organisms share these four in roughly the same proportion. Um, so now let's, we know that we have macromolecules. This discussion focuses on how did the macromolecule form? So the how, um, it's, a, it's an actual reaction. And the old fashioned term, the grandpa vocabulary would have been condensation reactions. Now, today, we don't really hear that term anymore. Uh, it's more commonly referred to as a dehydration synthesis reaction. And if we think of that term, dehydration synthesis. So synthesis to form, to make, uh, dehydration, the loss of a water, right? or, or the, the release of water, if we can think. So in this process, the, the mechanism by which macromolecules are formed. So we're synthesizing stuff, we're forming stuff. So basically now we're looking at a 
hydroxyl group, which you should remember, right? The hydroxyl functional groups, uh, the last bit of uh, chapter two. So we have a hydroxyl functional group from one monomer. It's going to be linked to the hydrogen from another monomer, right? And in that process, H with OH is going to form water. So that's one of the byproducts of this dehydration synthesis reaction. I'll get to that in a bit. So just trying to give you a visual picture here, right? So this could be the monomer for proteins. Or it could be the monomer for carbohydrates, the monomer for nucleic acids, whatever the case. Somewhere on the periphery, on the perimeter of that monomer, there would be a hydroxyl group a separate, a distinctive monomer of the same category uh, would be around with maybe a hydrogen as well. So we haven't discussed enzymes yet. We're gonna to get to those very soon. Uh, but an enzyme would come in here and instigate and cause a little chaos and disruption and it would break that covalent bond. Another one would come in here and break that covalent bond. So releasing a, hy a hydroxyl, releasing a hydrogen. Those would connect together to form water and now this monomer is missing a partner this monomer is missing a partner so they would then reconnect together to form that little covalent bond and again that is the process that we call dehydration synthesis <clears throat> we're synthesizing a bigger molecule and we're dehydrating this in the process we're releasing the water so same scenario we have a hydroxyl we have a hydrogen so now another enzyme would come in here, break this, enzyme break this, those connect to form water, and then these two reconnect, restabilize in that uh, monomeric sort of uh, bond right there, that covalent bond that establishes this bigger macromolecule. So uh, think of it kind of like a train, right? A train is a big thing, a long thing, but it's made up of many individual parts. In the train, you have that hook mechanism uh, that actually connects those two cars. Well, it's kind of the same thing. We've got a hook mechanism, but it's actually a bond. It's a chemical covalent bond, a strong bond that connects these things together. So if I gave you this on the, on the test, right? So here, show me, walk me through the process of dehydration synthesis. Right? How would you illustrate? How would you walk me through that process? Right? So, um, if we analyze these, so in dehydration synthesis, this green circle, this monomer would have to connect with this monomer. How, would, how do we accomplish that, right? Well, we have to destabilize this bond. And if I break a hydroxyl here, uh, I'm not going to come over here and break this hydroxyl. That's not going to be the definition of dehydration synthesis. So if I break the hydroxyl, I'm going to have to come in here and break the hydrogen giving us H2O, two uh, water molecule, or one water molecule, two hydrogens, one oxygen, one water molecule. That would be lost, and then the green circle would be able to connect with this other green circle there. So again, the same process. So we lose a hydrogen, we lose a hydroxyl, forms water, and then we have the enzymes that reconfigure that bond, and we have a bigger, heavier macromolecule dehydration synthesis. Now, the opposite process, right? So right now in your body, you have dehydration synthesis going on, right? You, if you have a cut, a scratch, maybe you've been working out, you're adding muscle tissue, or maybe we haven't been working out, we're adding other type of tissue, right? So how do we add tissue to the body? By the process of dehydration synthesis, yeah? Now, if you ate dinner and, and you, you're breaking down the hamburger, you're breaking down the pizza. So the process of breaking down is this process that's defined as hydrolysis. It's an actual breaking of bonds, at, again, at the chemical level. So this is the reaction in which polymers are broken down, they're split apart back to their individual monomers. So the opposite of dehydration synthesis. Dehydration synthesis forms, hydrolysis breaks apart. So an important uh, 
uh, very fundamental type of reactions, both, right? And, and both of them are happening in our body on a regular basis, right? We're breaking things down. We're digesting things. Um, parts of our body break down on a daily basis and parts of our body have to be repaired on a daily basis. Right? So uh, both reactions, the building, the synthesis, and the breaking, the hydrolysis reactions are happening. So again, so here we're looking at hydrolysis. So we have bond, red bond, bond, red bond. So we have one, two, three things connected. So it's, it's in essence one big unit there, right? So we have one functional big polymer. And what ends up happening, a different array of enzymes come in and now start to break that covalent bond. They break the covalent bond. Another enzyme comes in and splits apart water, breaks the hydrogen off water. So once these two are split apart, a hydroxyl is added to one and then the hydrogen to the other. And same mechanism, we come in here, we break that bond, a uh, enzyme breaks the water, hydroxyl is given back and hydrogen is given back and we end up with our three uh, individual monomers, right? Instead of one polymer. So this would be considered a polymer back to the monomers. Over here, dehydration synthesis, we have the monomers that connect to form a single unit. So again, once you know one of these reactions, just kind of visualize the opposite process to get to the, to the other. So again, here we have the bond connecting the units, the monomers. We break the bond, we break water, and that's then restructured as now not one large thing, but two smaller entities, so hydrolysis. With that, I'm going to sort of stop this little video and let you process all that. So the different macromolecules, uh, each one of these will be its own chapter. Right? So chapter three will cover detail in proteins, chapter four, uh, chapter five, and chapter six. So the next four chapters will each address uh, all the, the ins and outs, the details of these macromolecule categories. Right? But again, let me stop this one so the video doesn't get too big there. We don't want a big macromolecule video. We don't want a big macro video. Right?